There you go. We are going to reconvene our meeting that we started at 5 uh, with an in camera session at 6 32. So, there you go. Uh, we're back in. Uh, just a quick public announcement. Uh, Miss Tammy Rowley has a whole box of Girl Guide cookies <laughs> right here. So, if you're looking, please support your Girl Guide. She's got them. You need to buy some because. Yeah, <laughs> I already got one on the cuff. So, um, where are we at? We're at two, three, agenda approval. 3.1, regular meeting. Can I get an approval of agenda? Councillor Holiday? As amended. Um, yeah, oh, yes. Actually, do we need to amend for our in-camera afterwards? So have you? We have to add it. Okay, we're going to add an in-camera session after, at the end of the Correct. regular business meeting. Correct. Okay, so you've got that in. Does that need to be a motion for you? Uh -huh. As amended. So you yep. just made an amendment to the agenda? Yep. We'll okay, we'll unanimous on that. So can I get an all in favor for the amendment to agenda? Where? Good. There you go. Have that. It'll be item 17. It will be. Item 17. Now, Councillor Howley, would you like to make a motion to adopt the agenda? Yes. Ooh. Yes. Motion to adopt the agenda as amended. Perfect. Okay, uh, all in favor? Excellent, that's carried. Adoption of the March 4th regular council business meeting minutes. Any questions regarding the minutes? <coughs> Seeing none, can I get an adoption? Councillor Hamilton. All in favor? Oh, did you? No, nope. nope, okay. you're good. Okay. Question period. Sorry, i got to get Bruce to doing this again. Uh, question period. Uh, 15 minutes of question period is scheduled at the start of every regular council meeting minute, or uh, council meeting. Um, is there any questions received from the public tonight, Mr. Todd? None this evening, Mayor Frank. All right, seeing none, we're going to move on. 6.0, statutory hearings, there's no items. <coughs> Moving on to delegations. 7.1, unscheduled. 8, reports. 8.1, specifically Turner Valley Municipal Enforcement 2018 year-end report. Mr. Sharp, I hand it over to you. Thank you, Mayor Crane. I have uh, uh, Officer Trevor here who is going to give his uh, Municipal Enforcement uh, annual year in review. Good evening. Just, just hit your button there and I'll light you up. Oh, great. There you go. Okay. Uh, first off, let me start off by saying uh, this report will be uh, directed through the CEO to your chair and members of council. Uh, before you have the 2019 or 2018 Municipal Enforcement Year End Report. This report is provided to the Alberta Solicitor General and gives us a brief overview and summary of our municipal enforcement officers as they are uh, peace officers within the province of Alberta. This report is required as part of our due diligence with the province to ensure accountability and transparency. Um, first page obviously gives us a breakdown of our traffic stats for the year of 2018. Um, we did notice a slight decrease in our traffic stats. This uh, it does fluctuate year to year depending on uh, the summer and holidays and traffic flow. We did notice a sizable decrease in our traffic flow this year. Um, this corresponded with the Alberta transport uh, numbers that we saw earlier. So this again, um, it, is, it goes in waves depending on holidays and the economy and everything else here. Um, Page number two will provide you with a, a detailed uh, breakdown of some of the provincial acts and the bylaws we enforce, including the uh, Traffic Safety Act, Gaming and Liquor Cannabis Regulations, Environmental Protection, Innkeepers Act, Animal Protection, Dangerous Dogs, Petty Trespass, Provincial Offenses Procedures Act, Stray Animals Act, and the Tobacco and Smoking Reduction Act. Uh, we saw a 20% decrease in the number of calls for service. When I say calls for service, these, these are complaints generated by the public. 
or self-generated complaints. These do not include uh, traffic stats by any means. Uh, overall, there's a 13% decrease in number of citations issued for various bylaw and provincial offenses in 2018. Um, we move into our animal control and our pound operations. The town of Turner Valley operates a municipal pound. Uh, we contract those services to the town of Black Diamond. Uh, and unlike the town, sorry, <coughs> unlike the town of Black Diamond, we actually have a, a bylaw that uh, deals with cats at large. Uh, in 2018, uh, Turner Valley impounded 27 dogs. <coughs> of those 27 dogs, all of them returned to owners. Uh, the cats, 20 were impounded, with only one animal being returned to its owner. Uh, Turner Valley is very proud that we uh, sponsor a no-kill policy, meaning none of our animals are sent to the SPCA and are, are put to sleep. Uh, we done with the work of our uh, pound attendant, Colleen Betcher. She works very closely with a lot of different animal organizations and is able to get these animals adopted out to homes throughout uh, throughout the area. Um, some animals, feral cats for one, um, cannot be adopted out for obvious reasons and those are sent out to a farm cat program uh, where, they're, where they're cared for that way. Uh, business license update. Uh, missiles enforcement staff were involved in reviewing and recommending a number of rec revisions to the business license bylaw for allowing clarity and enforceability. Our previous bylaw didn't allow for uh, some of the charging sections had to be rearranged so we could actually do our jobs um, effectively. Uh, <coughs> we move into our municipal municipal partnerships. Uh, we work very closely with a number of different agencies, including the RCMP, the Alberta Traffic Sheriffs, Commercial Vehicle Enforcement, the Town of Black Diamond, the Village of Longview, and the MD of Foothills. Uh, in addition, we use these partners to assist with some of our projects, uh, community projects, meaning uh, like the bike safety program we have at the schools, which incorporate the use of the RCMP, uh, Black Diamond Peace Officers, and our fire department. Uh, without these volunteers, we really couldn't run that program effectively. Um, we are currently located in the RCMP detachment. Um, this really facilitates some information sharing and cooperation between our agencies and our municipal We report directly to uh, community services manager, not the detachment commander. So all our direction comes from the town, not the, not the RCMP. Um, we provide, we continue to provide effective traffic enforcement services to the town, the town of Turner Valley. Um, one of the things we noticed uh, in 2018, we had a marked decrease in the number of driving complaints, especially in our residential roads since the, uh, the implementation of the 40 kilometer speed limit. Um, this, uh, this decrease obviously is, is beneficial to everyone in, in our community. However, uh, DeKelta and 16th Avenue continue to be a significant concern for us. Uh, with, yes, sir. On the culture, there's a speed indicator uh, machine. Yes, sir, yes, sir. That's not been working now for over a month. I just wonder why, if it's uh, considered to be an area where speeding is a problem. I would have to consult with Public Works on that. It may be a battery issue uh, with, the, with, the or with the winter uh, and diminished daylight. Uh, that might be a solar powered issue that we have to deal with, but I can look into that for sure. Thank you. We can lower that for Continue, please. Okay. Um, <coughs> we're finding that the people were finding that they were getting extremely high speeds. Uh, this is a 50 kilometer zone with house, residential houses on Dekelta and extremely deep dish, ditches and a hidden driveway or a hidden roadway entrance into the Royal Light there. Um, what we're finding out when we're stopping these folks, they're usually from out of town and it's your GPS, which is pointing them as the shortest distance south, meaning bypassing Black Diamond and traffic lights there. Um, it does cut down your, uh, your time to get down to 22X by about four or five minutes, and they see an open road and off they go. Um, mm. They don't have a vested interest in our community, unfortunately, and we're seeing our increased speed up there. Uh, traffic volumes remain, remain pretty consistent up on, on this area. However, the development of the Southwest Ring Road may impact traffic volumes. We're not sure to what extent at this point. And uh, we'll continue monitoring those. Uh, school zones, playground zones continue to be a high priority for us. And enforcement is done on a continual basis in these areas. Um, we're finding very few complaints in our, in our local area school zones and very few tickets being handed out. Any warnings handed out are usually to, this, to the folks dropping off their kids. So I know public education goes a long way. Um, community events, uh, 2018, uh, we hosted a number, Turner Valley hosted a number of community events. Uh, 
these included the New Year's Eve uh, festivities, Discovery Days, the Diamond Valley Parade, and a third party organized uh, event such as the Millerville Run, which incorporates over 800 runners into our area. Um, what we've done in the past is we'll, we'll assist with traffic control issues or traffic control duties during these runs. Uh, they're very well managed and don't recall a lot of resources. However, we have had functions where our resources are, are taxed, where we've actually required the third party to pay for our service during their events. Okay. Uh, the big one is the pulse changes running from the coming from the Rod Lazenby inquiry. Uh, as you recall, Rod Lazenby was a peace officer in the India foothills, was killed on duty. His fatality inquiry was held last year in the summer and came out with a number of recommendations. Uh, the Solicitor General came out with the recommendations that they are going to be uh, uh, implementing with the Peace Officer Program. Uh, one of those, one of the recommendations is going to be uh, ensuring that each Peace Officer Agency has a dedicated dispatch. Uh, right now the city is, or the town of Turner Valley uses Fresk as our dispatch and the other uh, one is going to be going to be a known risk of policy. Meaning if we have deal with subjects or addresses where an officer's safety is at risk, um, we share that information with the RCMP and the RCMP will share that information with us. Therefore, if we're sending an officer there, we want to know what we're walking into and who we're dealing with. Mm -hmm. If there's concerns, we'll take we'll double up or take an RCMP member with us. This is, this is obviously in the best interest of everybody involved here. Mm -hmm. um, the Soul Gen had put an April 1st date on, on, these, uh, on these projects. However, that's now been extended to June 1st. I can advise uh, council through the chair that uh, we're already well positioned. Our policies are in place, and uh, I don't anticipate any other concerns with this. So, moving forward, um, we can move into our uh, bylaw operations. Uh, this page will give you basically a breakdown of the bylaw <coughs> offenses we're dealing with. Um, in a, in a fairly broad category. Animal control um, includes excessive barking of licensed animals, uh, dog bites, and requests for cat traps. Property responsibility includes snow removal and sunny premises. And the traffic bylaw represents uh, most uh, fences not covered by the Provincial Act, such as parking um, along those lines. Abandoned vehicles <coughs> or blocked access to public and pro private property. Um, our Turner Valley uh, bike rodeo is coming up in May. Uh, plans are already underway with that. Uh, we're drawing on again on our municipal partners to uh, to assist with this. And uh, I can jump. We kind of touched on the community initiatives and patrols already. Um, most of our community or our patrol initiatives are based on the Alberta Traffic Safety Calendar, which is available through Alberta Transport Alberta or Alberta Transport. And I'll give you a breakdown of what we're focusing on that month, whether it be intersections, uh, September is always, uh, August is always motorcycles, I believe, September school zones, and so on. Uh, the AFRAX radio system, um, all of our vehicles and our cells are equipped with the AFRAX radios now. Um, we're already operating off of it. Um, we're lucky enough right now with the RCMP are still operating off a VH VHF system. That is looking to change probably in late summer, early September. Um, when that happens, we will no longer have direct access with them. And officer safety training. All of our officers are up on their annual certified training. Um, and this was actually completed at the AECPO conference in February. Uh, questions? Yeah, I got a couple. Yeah, Jonathan. Oh, uh, just hit your button there. Sorry. There go. Yeah, thanks so much for that report. I appreciate the work done. Two uh, questions, if you may. A point of clarification regarding cannabis. Any responses to that? And then secondly, the AFREX radio system with the inability to maintain direct communication with the RCMP, can you please speak to that? Through the chair to uh, Council Gordon, if anything. Um, Henry Fatty, uh, cannabis was Y2K. Um, we have absolutely no complaints regarding it so far. However, as the public uh, perception changes and the weather gets warmer, as it was decriminalized in October, we may see the rise in that, but uh, again, that'll, uh, that's yet to be seen. So, we're hopefully, uh, hopefully everybody's behaving themselves and the complaints are kept to a minimum. However, we do have processes in place that can deal with them appropriately. So, uh, as far as AFRAX, 
this is an area of concern has been brought forward to the RCMP and K Division. Mm -hmm. um, that question would be better probably addressed by them. I can speak to our own concerns and I'm sure those concerns are going to be, um, Council's probably aware of those already, but again, um, direct access is crucial and what that's going to look like I have no idea. Currently right now, um, the RCMP do have an AFRAC scanner in their office where they can hear us, but they can't talk to us directly. But again, we have VHF contact with them also right now at this point. So. But that's supposed to end, right? Yes, sir. <coughs> Thank you. You're welcome, sir. Any other questions? Councilor Adams? <coughs> yeah, my question to you. <coughs> you obviously get around town as a bylaw officer. Are we good as far as speed zones are concerned, stop signs? Are, are like 40 is the new, the new norm in residential. You said that's had a positive impact on us. What about the, uh, the one going by the entry into Royal Lake there, 16th, is 50 too slow? It is for me, by the way. But <laughs> <laughs> Not when you're walking down that it isn't. <laughs> no, and that, that's, uh, Councilor Ward brings out, a, brings out an important part. Um, around town, the 40 has had positive impact, absolutely. We've seen a, a substantial decrease in our traffic complaints in residential areas. Um, as far as the 50 kilometer zone on, on 16th Avenue, those, those, that speed limit was set by traffic engineers. Um, I understand probably, and this is my personal opinion on this, it's going to be, it's, we do have a number of, especially in the summer, a number of residents walking on there. As you're aware, that has very, very narrow shoulders mm -hmm. and quite steep ditches. Um, we have been to a couple of traffic motor vehicle collisions there where at a higher speed, the, the, circum the, the results could have been tragic. So um, again, um, we're pretty reasonable. You think but it's good, it's good. Uh, I think I think we're probably well, on, the, on the right track there. Just asking for your No, I appreciate you, it. You, you enforce it, so you know. No, I appreciate Thank it. Thanks, sir. Excellent. Thanks, Mr. Rep. Ms. Hamilton. Thanks. Um, my question is more. I think it falls under the traffic bylaw, and um, just on abandoned vehicles. I know with snow removal, I saw the town trying to really work around some vehicles that were left on the road, and now we've got. It's spring, it feels like it anyway, so we're going to have um, street cleaning happening. And I'm just wondering, because I don't know, and, and I guess I could have looked into it, but do we um, deal with abandoned vehicles just by patrolling, or is that something that requires a phone call in, or how would we treat those situations? So abandoned vehicles, it's a bit of a, it's... It's very black and white according to the law. 72 hours your vehicle has to be moved. However, you go on holidays or you go or your grandmother's visiting, you take her to Banff for a couple days. 72 hours and we show up and tow your vehicle. Um, we usually work on a complaint basis. However, if it's, if it's obvious the vehicle's been there for quite a while or it's unregistered, we'll put a sticker on it, contact the owner uh, and say, you got to move your vehicle. Uh, when it comes to snow removal or uh, not snow removal, but street cleaning, it's clearly posted on the signs uh, on each block. It could be increased to, uh, to my liking, but again, it's, it's fairly obvious street cleaning is coming. If people choose not to move their vehicle, we'll do everything we can possibly to get them to move it before the street cleaner gets to their point. Um, the problem is if we end up towing it, we'll short tow it, meaning we'll tow it around the corner uh, out of the way of the street sweeper, where the town actually inherits the bill on that one. The vehicle owner won't. The other option is Told the vehicle to the impound and where they're paying impound fees and toll fees. And if you're out of town for that day, the street signs aren't up. The signs are up usually about 48 hours in advance or 72 hours in advance. If you're on holidays, again, some common sense uh, will dictate how we deal with you and some discretion, obviously. Just in response, my, um, my question was more in like vehicles that have been sitting for a very long period of time. Like, this isn't somebody who left on Friday for a long weekend and street cleaning was on Tuesday. So would you prefer those to come in like on a complaint or do we do, do we enforce that by driving around and just noticing? We do deal with them proactively if it's an obvious, obvious vehicle. There are a couple right now that we are dealing with. Um, complaint basis, absolutely. Um, if it's affecting the community, we want to know about it. Okay. Thank you. Councillor Holday. Yeah, um, going back to your first slide um, with your infraction types, uh, your speeding has gone down noticeably. Um, your other violations, 
have gone up steadily year over year. Is that like cell phone distracted driving or what would be under other violations? Through the chair, no counselor holiday. That would incorporate distracted driving also. Uh, distracted driving um, stats throughout the province are still rising. Uh, according to the AMA, uh, distracted driving is uh, leading cause of motor vehicle collisions throughout the province and is actually uh, <coughs> higher than speeding and of and impaired driving. Yeah. So that's something we definitely concentrate on. Um, uh, other violations incorporated in this could be could be equipment violations along those lines too. Um, we can provide you with a full breakdown if if, if required. But again, uh, that less that list would be rather large. Right. That's so. mostly cell phone. But I'm not, I wouldn't say mostly cell phone, but uh, uh, grab distracted driving is, is it makes up probably a majority of those. Anyone else? Council Ray? I did mine early. You're good? Yeah, I didn't wait. All right, I'm good. I got everything I wanted to hear. Thank you very much for your service to the community at large. And thank you for this uh, report. Thank you. Councillor Norton with a motion to accept for information. No further discussion. All in favor? Excellent. Thank you. 9.1 Administrative Responses. Councillor Holliday has a response. You want to read that out or we're just going to accept that? Normally we put it up here on the board, but Heather is not here tonight, so we can't really read it. Tom? Um, no, that's fine. I, I guess uh, just an opportunity for Council Holiday, Holiday to verify that it answers your question or if there was a follow-up question to that and then we can move on. Yeah, it answered my question, but it obviously sparks more conversation that needs to be had and I don't know if we want to do that here tonight or if we're doing this at another time. Um, in regards to your comment at the end that you're currently reviewing having more things up on our website. Um, and I think for in interest tr of transparency and thoroughness, I think it would be best if we could have links to everything. Um, I know Foothills Regional Landfill has just gone to posting theirs on their website um, that we could easily link to probably. Um, but I, I think if it's important enough for uh, council to be um, attending these meetings, then it should be up for the public so, uh, and available on our website because it's a lot of committees to track and to go to all the different ones. I, I, and there's some committees that I've never, uh, like Community Futures, we hear a little bit about it, but it would be nice to have it available. So. Anybody else there? No. Um, just for the public's clarification, the question was, please provide a summary of all committees and how we report minutes back to our residents, i.e. links to the website, including an agenda package. Also provide some clarity on council versus administration's role in communicating and reporting on committee decisions. Are the committee reports done in the past? Uh, sorry, are the committee reports done in the past by our council best practice? Does the administration have any other suggestions to better facilitate the flow of information? So that's the question that was answered. Um, and as Councillor Holliday said, we'll have some more discussion on that in the future. Um, moving on to the 9.2, um, we're going to adopt both of these in one motion. And again, Councillor Holliday, would you like to speak to your second question and response? Yeah, this is more just um, asking what policies and bylaws and procedures we're going to be seeing this year uh, that are under review. Um, more just as a heads up for the rest of Council to uh, kind of know what we're going to be dealing with. It looks like we've got a busy year. So, thank you. Any questions from Council? I'm going to get a motion to adopt, Cindy. I think Cindy should get that motion. Councillor Alde. I will give you a motion to adopt the information. Administrative responses. The administrative inquiry responses is information. <coughs> All right. All in favor? Excellent. Thank you. Administrative inquiries 10.1. Uh, I believe we have a few questions that we've compiled here today. Um, Todd, do you have a master copy or are we going to go down our line again? I will leave it to you. Okay, uh, uh, Councillor Gordon, do you have yours? I didn't mind get mine written in. Okay, Councillor Alden, yours? 
Uh, yeah, first one was to, uh, I was asking for an update on plans for improving the town website. Uh, this ties in obviously with my last administrative inquiry and getting more thorough information out there for residents. Um, and just wondering, uh, we talked about it, it wasn't a budget item, um, but just wondering if it was going to be an overhaul or just adding and updating the information and if we had a timeline on that. Go ahead, Mr. So, uh, the short answer is yes. We have a we have plans to update the Turner Valley Town website in 2019. Over the next few weeks, uh, we'll be sitting down with administration and council to set the timelines for priorities for 2019, as you know. And uh, so, I can't give you a specific time on when that will happen, but we have it planned in 2019. So, um, timelines to follow. Thank you. Uh, so that was your two? No, that was one. Oh, that was one? Three. That was mini questions and one question. There you go. <coughs> uh, the second one was about the subdiv um, more on website and what's available. Uh, the subdivision application form, um, do we currently have it on the town website, as well as um, application forms for land use bylaw or other statutory plan amendments. Um, just wondering if the processes are clearly laid out for individuals and businesses. Um, so that they know the timelines and documentation and what's required. Through the mayor, I'm going to need to take that question away. It's a multi-pronged question. I'll bring back a more thorough answer for you at the next council meeting. Thanks. Excellent. <coughs> Thank you. Um, I had, well, actually, I'll go down to Rob. Rob, did you have any administrative inquiries? I have no questions at all. I'm just quiet. Councilor Allenton? No, I'm good. Thank you. You're good. Councilor Wayne? Um, I, I sent one in, but I didn't sort of address it as an administration inquiry. It was, it was regarding uh, well, seven. well seven. I think I got that one covered. Anyway, I'll tell you what. Well seven. How's well seven doing? So I believe uh, what Councillor Waring is referring to is one of the one of the wells um, at our water treatment plant. Um, not to alarm anyone because there's no concerns, but one of the wells' uh, water level had dropped slightly, but had not affected uh, the water levels in the reservoir. But uh, there was some repair work that was to be done. Uh, my knowledge, I was told that last Wednesday or Thursday, the electrician would be on site. Unfortunately, um, I wasn't able to reach the Shruck, uh, the Shruck operations staff today to find out to confirm that, but we're not seeing any negative effects at all. In, in fact, we're making steady progress in filling the water reservoir, but I will certainly get that answer back to Council. Yeah, the missing electrician. Excellent. Thank you. Um, and I have, uh, I had two, I'm only finding one here, but anyway, uh, here it goes. Uh, at a recent, um, the recent 2019 by-election candidates forum, it was brought to the attention of the public Organizing organizational chart for the town of Turner Valley cannot be located on the town website. Can you please update the public as to when the chart will be readily available on the town website in a user-friendly manner? So, coincidentally, um, I'm happy to inform council that we posted the uh, organizational chart on the town website today. I don't have the the web path for it, but I, I promise you it is within two clicks under the municipal office. Um, so uh, the chart is there in a PDF format. Perfect, thank you. Now I found my other one on Councilor Waring or Deputy Mayor Waring's phone. <laughs> uh, what are the current water levels at the water treatment plant and how is the new intake, intake system performing as we move into the spring runoff season? Do you foresee any issues with water restrictions in the near future? Thanks. Thank you. No problem. It was so politely asked, Mayor Green. Thank you. Um, I um, again, as related to uh, my response to Councillor Waring, I was not able to hear back from the operations staff today to get an update on where the reservoir levels are. I can confirm that the intake system is performing well as intended uh, off the temporary pump. Uh, and in the springtime, in, in the weeks to come, when the permanent pump arrives, uh, that will be installed. As far as whether we foresee any issues with water restrictions in the near future, I think it would be prelim uh, um, pre premature uh, for me to comment on that. We haven't received any uh, indication that we would be running into any challenges. However, we're going to still continue 
to encourage the community to practice um, responsible water conservation measures, whether we have a level one or a level two water restrict, uh, water conservation level. Um, specifically around water conservation, we anticipate bringing, on a related note, we anticipate uh, bringing back the water conservation uh, by a lot of council for another look uh, in the next six weeks or so. Okay. Thank you very much. All right, that is good. Uh, so if we could have those questions in the next agenda uh, answered as well for the minutes. 11, bylaws policies. 11.1 .1 is the uh, ISBAB <coughs> agreement. Option one, we have a, I'll just let it load up here. <coughs> Division Appeal Board, Intermunicipal, yeah. All right, Council, it is <coughs> in your hands to set this in motion. I can do nothing for you. Councillor Larry? Get my own back from Yeah, you like that? That was, yeah. <laughs> that was a good one. Um, motion is to uh, Council to accept option one that Council authorize the Mayor and the CAO to sign the amended ISDAB agreement as presented. Discussion, Council. Is there going to be a presentation by administration? There is not, um, but we're going to hand it off to Todd and he's going to speak to the minor changes. <coughs> Thank you, Councillor Hamilton and Mayor Crane. Um, this this uh, RFD before you is fairly straightforward. It's a it's an agreement that we have had between Black Diamond and Longview regarding uh, the intermunicipal excuse me the intermunicipal subdivision and development appeal board. Um, we were running into some challenges with the way the agreement had currently been uh, worded, and predominantly it was around quorum. Uh, currently, quorum uh, consists of three members, um, one from each of Black Diamond. Turner Valley and Longview, uh, with a total of seven potential candidates around the table. Uh, unfortunately, because of those numbers, we were having difficulty getting quorum, so one of the adjustments that we'd like to make to the operating agreement, and, and the two other municipalities have agreed, is to increase the number of uh, potential candidates for, uh, to between seven and 11, which would allow, add a larger pool for us to draw from in order to ensure quorum if we do have an appeal that the ISDAB uh, needs to hear. We also added additional clarity on the membership criteria, uh, included mandatory training for ISDAB uh, board members, which is as per the MGA. And finally, uh, we added a couple of terms and some housekeeping on the agreement. Uh, we did make an uh, add something regarding per diems for board members who serve. There's no change to those per diems. We've just formalized them in the agreement. So with that, we're asking council to adopt the changes as presented. <coughs> Thank you. Councilor Hamilton. I just had a, a bit of a concern with increasing the members to 11. The training, I believe, for this um, is pretty expensive, or at least worth noting that it is an expense. Um, so by increasing it by another an additional <coughs> four members, we do need to con take that into consideration for budget time. Also the per diem, if we had um, 11 members showing up, that could also get very expensive very quickly. So just some concerns that I had that is this cost will be going up for um, this committee. Yeah, before, before we make it a motion, just a point of clarification, uh, we'll have to change that date to the an agreement dated this blank day of 2019. It's stated as 2018. So. Other councillors, any comments? Confuser for a second. <laughs> I was saying it was a bad date in the motion. Um, yeah, no, now's our time to speak to it. Councillor Hamilton, thoughts? Um, no, I wanted to hear a response to Councillor Hamilton. I think those are valid. Go ahead, Todd. Certainly, thank you. Through the mayor, uh, I agree with you. Uh, 
Uh, that is, the, uh, there, there could be an added cost to adding to the size of the pool of, of eligible members that we would have. Um, those would, that would be shared amongst the uh, partners in the agreement, so we wouldn't be bearing the full cost of that. Uh, secondly, fortunately, history has shown the ISDB, ISDAB board meets infrequently. And so while you could have all 11 uh, potentially show up to uh, a hearing, we would select some based on that, so it wouldn't be all 11. And secondly, the chances of us doing those on a regular basis would be very slim based on history. So while there's a risk of added costs, we'll factor that into the budget. And um, if history shows, it should be negligible. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Gordon. Yeah, I want to speak to this motion. I, I think it's a wise move to add to the pool because I think historically there's been issues trying to even get the quorum done. So I think that's a wise move to add to the pool. Thank you for speaking for Any more discussion? Councilor Rapp? <coughs> You're good? All right. Uh, in that case, I'm going to call the motion for question. All in favor? And we're good. Thank you. Number 12, old business. Old, oh, this is my favorite right here. 12.1 <laughs> Recycling Center update glass market. Todd. Uh, thank you, Mayor Crane. Uh, just a short update on the Oil Fields Recycling Center. Um, as, as you're very well aware, uh, we've been struggling with the recycling market in general has been struggling of late um, with the variations in the market and not the least of which is the lack of a, the lack of a market in general for glass. Um, some weeks ago we were approached by a producer, uh, a company owner, uh, who has, uh, their job is to uh, haul glass, quite simply haul it to glass crushing facilities that have another use for the glass. Um, they also approached uh, High River and Okotoks. Um, Okotoks uh, have circled back to us in High River and spoke to us about the opportunity and we think we found, we know we found a regional solution. So uh, quite simply, uh, Okotoks will be the managing partner in an arrangement whereby uh, we will have our glass, we will haul our own glass to Okotoks at, to a point of central collection, at which point this taker, if you will, uh, will then haul uh, the bin to the purchaser that he has. Um, in the, the locations are in Oregon and Moose Saskatchewan. And the product we believe, well, we know, will be used for uh, asphalt and road paving. Uh, we secured uh, in our agreement with that individual quarterly reports on how the glass is used and how much of that uh, product they have been taking off our hands. We estimate that uh, this initiative will cut our glass recycling costs by better than half. Uh, now, while that's not a huge number considering I, I don't have it in front, oh, it's about $2,400 a year is our glass recycling budget, so dollars and cents wise, it may not uh, knock anybody off their feet, but the fact that we are uh, diverting it from the landfill and continually looking for better solutions for recycling, Absolutely, and I couldn't agree with you more. It's the environmental uh, impact that we're making uh, and setting the example for our future generations that uh, it's possible to get it done. So that's uh, that's great. Any other comments from uh, council? I just want to throw that in. Rep? I think I have two. It's nice to hear Saskatchewan is on the cutting edge again. <laughs> <laughs> and also, uh, Dry. <laughs> And also, I guess I better start washing my glass and recycling. Yeah. Cutting. <laughs> glass. Yeah. Uh, I don't think it's in Go ahead, Pat. Uh, just to follow up with that, I realized I didn't do a very good job of explaining the process or what was happening. Um, Go for it. So we will communicate with residents as soon as we're ready to start uh, accommodating that agreement. Uh, but in a nutshell, what we're going to do is take it, uh, is we're going to take our glass to Okotoks, haul it that way ourselves. Um, clean and clear glasses, what they will take, so anything colored they won't take, we need to take the lids off, and there will be a couple of other criteria that we can educate residents on through uh, marketing communications generally and at the Oil Fields Recycling Centre. And 
uh, our hope was that the bin would be placed this week, but in order to make a best use of the one we've got, we're going to wait till the bin that we have is full, and then uh, install the, the new bin for the new. Okay. Excellent. Come for a holiday. Uh, for this education for the public, will we be letting them know that the colored glass is not recyclable in no uncertain terms? Okay. Um, uh, in our Foothills Regional Landfill Committee meeting when we were discussing this originally, apparently it's all oil containers of colored glass that makes up the bulk of that's not recycled. So people can think about buying it in plastic, that'd be great. Excellent. If there's no other questions, can I get a motion to adopt that for information? Councillor Rabb, I'll go to. Yep. Thank you, Councillor Rabb. All in favor? Aye. Perfect. Moving on, 13, no items under new business. 14.1, correspondence, West End Regional Sewage Services Commission. Uh, we have some information there. I'm going to ask Councillor Rabb to uh, <coughs> talk on this point. What? Thank you, uh, Mayor Green, uh, Deputy Mayor Waring, and myself were on West End, and uh, we had two severe breaks in the main line last year, the old line, that's called the old line, was the existing line before the flood. Two major breaks, and uh, one was fixed, no problems. The second one was fixed, and subsequent to that, we have a blockage in the line. So uh, they've tried a few different ways to unplug that blockage with no success. So West End has decided they would try one more fix, which is really a pressure, either air or water, try and flush the line in the black diamond side. Uh, if that's not successful, I think West End says, well, I guess we really can't afford to pay anymore. So that would come back to the town of Turner Valley because really it doesn't matter so much the black diamond, but for us, the old line saved us putting all these chemicals in to prevent the H2S issues. So. Uh, we hope this works, at least Council Waring and I certainly hope it works, and I think all <laughs> residents of Turner Valley would be really pleased if it worked as well. If it doesn't work, then we'll have to check in to see what the cost might be and, and deal with that uh, from our community. Is that pretty sufficient, Councilor Mayor Yeah. Thank you. Uh, comments from Council? Cindy? Yeah, I'm just wondering, are, is this flushing and the investigations that have gone so on so far, are they been centered on where the break happened to determine if that wasn't yes. fixed properly? Have they have they really focused in on that? Uh, yes and no. The first thing they did, obviously, was uh, check the break, and they sent cameras down both sides of the second break, that, thinking that they might be able to find it, but cameras can't go any further than that, and they found no blockage. But I think there's something like... I'm going to say 21 90 degree turns on the black diamond side. You know, for a sewer to turn 90 degrees, that's pretty extreme, really. And I think there's 21 of them, so it could happen any place. And it's also old pipe, and it's when I say old, it's younger than me, so it's not old. But but it's uh, it's pipe that uh, that was used back about 40 years ago, and the pipe that they use then was approved at that time, but it really isn't very good quality pipe. So even if we fix that, even if we find it, spend some money on it, we might have two months of good business and all of a sudden we might have another break. And then, you know, to, to dig it out, it cost like, I don't know, 60,000 bucks for the first one we did. So to make a long story short, we have a letter from uh, the CAO of uh, West End saying they will spend, West End that is, will spend another 6,000 bucks. Hopefully we can get it. If we don't, then I guess we'd have to deal with it. So I'd like to make the motion that we accept this letter as information. Well, I would like to point out that you just heard Councillor Rabb say the words, I'm going to make this long story short. Because <laughs> that's the first time you're in, and probably the last time you'll ever hear it. Um, any other questions uh, regarding West End's letter and Councillor Rabb's uh, talking points? All in favor? <laughs> <laughs> I had to get you. <laughs> uh, okay. <coughs> Correspondence action considerations. We have 15.1, a High River uh, 2019 Little Bridges Parade registration. I don't remember specifically the last time we've had anything in a parade other than Black Diamonds. Oh, what 
something longer. Yeah. Uh, action required. Council, are we willing to um, build a no. <laughs> float for May 18th and enter it into the parade? This is essentially the question. The long weekend in May. The long weekend in May. Discussion. I'm going to get a motion for some action here. Waring, what do you got to say? I, I would say that um, as a motion that we accept this for information, but as an aside, there has been some discussions about arranging some form of float for the Black Diamond Parade. And in the event that we do go ahead and do that, then this float could then be used in other parades in the future. True. All right, so we're going to take uh, Councillor Gordon. A quick question here. The actual invitation is to, the purpose for this invitation was that they are saluting the service clubs of High River. So potentially, um, we may consider, I'm not sure exactly which service clubs are in our region that could benefit from an exposure like this. I don't know if anybody else on council has uh, communication with a service club. Well, service clubs, you got, uh, Lions. I believe we listed them today, <laughs> yeah. the Legion, Lions, Rotary, Kinsmen, Knights of Columbus, uh, Kiwanis, it goes on. It goes on. Um, I'm sure they probably also aware, but I would assume, right? Uh, but yeah, that is a great theme to have. Um, I don't think, well, we have a motion from Waring to accept for information. Mm -hmm. Oh, we're good with that. But thanks for pointing that out, Councillor Gordon. Uh, okay, all there. And uh, could we also get a motion just to notify them that we won't be entering this year? But just so they're in the know. Ask them to send a letter to say thanks very much for the offer. Yeah. Is that cool? You yes. just send them a thank you? Yeah, I can. Go ahead. Yeah, through the mayor. I, we don't need a motion. Yeah, yeah okay. Fine. It'll be I'll done. Respond. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, moving on, committee, board correspondence and minutes. I believe uh, Councillor Holliday's administration inquiry uh, will better fill that column in the future. So no items there. We're going to take a five minute recess. Councillor Rev, thank you for that motion. And we will be going into closed session uh, in five minutes. So thank you for attending, uh, General Public. Tammy, good luck. Okay, Rev is coming out. Uh, A27. Yeah. Question. Um, one, yeah. I have one motion that is very simple. Um, it is in relation to Councillor Hamilton's earlier uh, request for information that the CAO include council uh, as an FYI for your information only for all development and business applications during the notification and circulation point of process from the planning department. I have it written down so you Good, can have it after. I don't have any support here. Yeah, no, so you can have it's that right, after. It's so on the recording. <laughs> is that, uh, <laughs> Still is. Is that clear? So I'll read <laughs> yes. it again. Uh, well, it goes, on, it goes up at 8.30. So just make that motion. <laughs> yeah. I, Lana's going to make it. Lana, well, the chair's gonna, not supposed to be. Yeah, exactly. So Lana. It's right there. Request. Letter. Request that the CAO include council as an FYI only, no comments back, for all development slash business applications during the notification and circulation point of process. Yep. Aye, aye. All in favor? Everybody makes sense there? As council wearing said, all in favor? Good. Yeah. Okay. Good motion. Perfect adjournment at 829. Thank you. Mr. Sir.